The recent history of the Philippines is the history of resistance against colonization. Since the 1600s, the islands have been occupied by the Spanish, the Bruneans, the Japanese, the British, and the Americans, dramatically impacting the nation's culture and religion. While the Republic gained its independence in 1947, many aspects of various occupying nations' cultures persist to this day. The tricycle, which is essentially a motorcycle with a passenger car modified for commercial use, is one of the most famous remnants of those cultures. When Japanese forces retreated from the islands during the Second World War, they utilized motorcycles and similar war machines to allow for swift infantry mobilization. The Filipinos have since seized and modified the abandoned equipment, turning it into one of the island's most iconic cab services. During Zine Month 2023, Aylwood Games, consisting of designer Roderick Magsino, artist Ramon Gill, and editor Roz Leahy, released Tricycle, Ride or Die, a system-neutral adventure pamphlet inspired by these historic machines. Using a point-crawl framework, players will race through jungles and checkpoints, facing legendary demons and braving relentless imperial hunters, driving all night to rescue an imperiled fugitive of the state. Set in an alternate history that combines the Philippines' various occupiers into the fascist Imperio, Tricycle is a solid, quick-paced module that never takes its eyes off the prize. Use the tools of your oppressors against them, struggle against waves of ruthless colonizers, and if you're lucky, tip the scales in favor of all-out rebellion. Tricycle wants players to exist in tension with two factions on the islands. First is the Imperio, the reigning power across the land. By combining the island's long history of colonization, the Imperio is no longer several discrete colonial empires, but instead a single force, a mashup of Spanish conquistadors with World War II technology. Over the past 300 years, the Imperio has suppressed dissent through propaganda and violence, forcing the native Babylon shamans to hide their identities and pick their battles carefully. The second power is the people, secret resistance movements and everyday folks just trying to escape the boot of persecution. The player characters are cast as tricycle cab drivers, suddenly thrust into a fight for their lives when a rebel priestess demands they take her to the town of Sugat, or risk retribution from their fascist overlords. Together, the players and their passenger will sneak through checkpoints, surge through treacherous terrain, and hopefully, make it through the night and reach the peak of the mountain. I think the central tension of the game is interesting, and its pamphlet structure allows everyone to get into the action quickly. From the jump, players are told who they are and their motivations, and more or less instantly have to start making calls about how to resist the setting's major antagonists. The game becomes more nuanced once you make choices about repairs and random encounters, but it initially sets you up to throw you into the thick of it. Once you escape your first brush with danger, you can start learning more about the woman who got you into this mess. Agbayani is a Babylon shaman, and she's been helping the people of the island stand up against the Imperio. Her wanted status means she's a high-value target, giving PCs enough motivation to push their luck against her pursuers as opposed to just handing her over. However, she's also a powerful ally, with a deadly blade and healing abilities that will give players enough reason to keep her on their side once things get heated. As far as themes go, I think the module wears its inspirations on its face. Players are caught between the tension of hiding from an occupying army, while still trying to show the average person that they're not a fascist sympathizer. Most importantly, players will be spending a lot of time on the run, fixing up their broken machine and making tough calls to secure supplies and safety. Tricycle, as one would hope, is a module about tricycles. The point crawl is divided into five legs and three checkpoints, representing the villages and obstacles you face driving up the mountain. The GM pamphlet explains helpfully how to manage each portion, First, a terrain detail is generated. Second, a check is made for handling and durability of the tricycle. Third, a road encounter occurs. And fourth, players may continue to the next leg or stop for a minute and take a breather. I think spelling out the travel sequence is a really smart choice because it lays out how the module is intended to be run by the GM, while the player pamphlet only shows the map, which still gives them an idea of how difficult each section is going to be. The main verb of the module is handling. Essentially, Handling is a skill check to determine how well you're able to navigate your vehicle, either through treacherous forested terrain, or in a moment of difficulty, such as combat or stunts. Since Tricycle is system neutral, there aren't specific mechanics to determine how these checks are resolved, but Aylwood Games provides a handy guide to judge when handling checks should be made easy, moderate, or hard. When I'm thinking of systems that could potentially use this module as a basis, I'm thinking of OSR games, 5e slash d20 systems, Powered by the Apocalypse, and Forged in the Dark. 
of these, I think OSR and D20 systems would work best, but I think games built around a fail-forward mechanic like PBTA and FITD will have to get a little creative with their mixed handling successes. The most important resource players will be managing is their tricycle's durability, represented by 4d6. Whenever a successful handling roll is made, players will need to roll one of these d6, but when a handling roll is failed, you'll need to roll all of them. Whenever a durability die rolls one or two, some part of your vehicle breaks, and that die is moved to the broken die basket. You can see how this makes things tricky, right? Statistically, whenever you roll 4d6, you have about an 80% chance of rolling at least one or two. So even if you succeed on your first handling roll, there's still a pretty good chance you're going to end up with a broken part. Repairs can be made with raw skill, but it's easier if you have someone with expertise or a spare part to make that check and fix your vehicle. However, you also need to take time to make that repair, which increases your lead timer. Each time you have to stop, your lead check's difficulty range increases by one, and when you roll at or below the timer, the Imperio Hunters, think Conquistadors on Harleys, catch up with your team. As far as consequences for failed rolls, this might seem pretty harsh. You're constantly going to be repairing your tricycle, and because of that, fascist dogs will continue to hound you. But I don't think this system is really a punishment. Instead, it's a way to get players to really engage with their machines. David Prokopetz has a Tumblr post about how TTRPG rules are tools to produce stories, and it got me thinking about how the importance of letting bad die rolls stand. In tricycle, the rules regarding handling and durability are intended to produce stories about a rickety machine that's constantly falling apart. That's the point of the durability system. By spending so much time maintaining the bike and carefully fighting your way up the mountain, you're going to grow to love the bucket of bolts, and every time you have to make a difficult jump or ram an enemy, a little part of you will wince in sympathy for your poor bike. On the flip side, you'll be pretty consistently rewarded for engaging with the encounters that pop up along your journey. The GM pamphlet has a range of interesting and strange scenarios, pitting players against monsters from Philippine folklore and navigating political tensions as the Imperio's grip slackens. Some of these rewards are things like healing potions and spare parts, but you even have the opportunity to gain upgrades to your tricycle, granting things like armor plating and ramming bumpers. I don't want to spoil too much of the narrative twists, but suffice it to say that if a player follows the breadcrumbs this module is laying down, they'll be in for a terrifying and thrilling time as they fight their way to the peak. For what is essentially only four pages of text, I think Tricycle packs a ton of interesting and useful material into a concise package. The layout alone is really impressive, designed to be laid out on a tabletop for players to track their bike stats at a glance, while also following their route up the mountains. It integrates Filipino folklore into a fictionalized setting that can be easily dropped into your regular campaign, but maintains a distinct identity because of its connection to the history of the archipelago. Even with its relatively short word count, I think you could easily get three hours of play out of this module, if not five, depending on how your rolls go. I think my biggest criticism of the module is that it takes a little bit of work to figure out what the numbers on the map mean, but it's fairly intuitive once you cross-reference it with the handling chart. On the whole, Tricycle is a really interesting supplement with a progression structure that's supported by its mechanics to create something that feels like a desperate race against time and your own crumbling bike. If a Philippine-inspired setting with revolution against colonialism at its heart sounds right up your alley, you'll want to take a look at this adventure. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate uh, everybody who takes the time to make it through the end of one of these videos. Uh, if you want to find more of my work, I'm at AaronSXL on Twitter, uh, but my main site is aavoit.com, where I talk about games, writing, and health policy. I also do two podcasts. The first is at Mortified Pod, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. Uh, we're about to talk about um, Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor, uh, which was a middle grade book that wasn't for us, but we still had a good time because we love what Shiren Shreja was doing. Um, if you want to listen to my other podcast, that's at The Bible Boys, where me and my friends Michael and Josh uh, review uh, Christian media. Uh, we're about to get through the uh, History Channel's um, Bible miniseries, so if that sounds something like that might be up your alley, please check that out. Uh, thank you, as always, again for watching. Uh, I hope to have another video out in a couple of weeks. Uh, some live stuff came up, so this is why this one's a little bit late, but, uh, you know, that's life. Until then, see ya!